No. No, stay where you are. Do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is... The Haunting Hour. The People in the House. All houses have their secrets. And the house on East 67th Street in New York was no exception. Its rooms had seen the births and deaths of seven generations of Thatchers. And now they looked down with despair upon the three people living within its walls. Evans Thatcher III, his son Kendall, Kendall's lovely wife Margaret. For evil and hatred stalked the rooms and took you by the throat when you entered the house. It was polite and hidden, but sinister. And present so strongly that you felt you could reach out and touch it. Margaret. Come in, my dear. I've been waiting for you. Oh, I... I didn't know you were home. Aren't you forgetting something, my dear? I didn't know you were home, father. That's much better, Margaret. I only ask that you behave as any daughter should to a father-in-law. Where's Kendall, father? My dear, Kendall is only my son, but he's your husband. I'm surprised you should ask me his whereabouts. Most wives are my friends, sir. All right, Kendall isn't home. Let's stop acting. My dear child, I've never acted with you. It is you who pretends to like me. I take little pains to conceal my dislike of you. I hate you. I hate you more than I believed I could ever hate another human being. And if it weren't for Kendall, Why don't you divorce Kendall, my dear? I'd gladly pay for it. Kendall isn't the proper husband for you. You should have married a strong young detective. There was a suitable match for you. By the way, what was his name? Walters. Larry Walters. Oh, yeah. I remember the name perfectly. Father. And I didn't marry him because I was in love with Kendall. Oh, come now, my dear. We both know the truth. You could hardly marry a representative of law and order if you told him the truth about yourself. But after tonight, why, I imagine that difficulty should be solved. Oh, you are completely vile. But there's one thing you've never understood. A mind like yours can't understand it. I love Kendall more than I hate you. And I'm not going to leave him alone with you so that you can ruin him completely. Too bad that you can't afford to move out of my house into an apartment of your own, isn't it? I'm sure that if Kendall could get a job and support you, you'd be deliriously happy. Yes, I would. But you've taken good care to see that Kendall is too weak to go out in the world, haven't you? Now, my dear Margaret... Don't think I... I don't know what you're doing. You've hated Kendall since the day he was born and deliberately set out to ruin him by, by giving him everything he wanted. You've made Kendall so completely dependent upon you that he's afraid to leave. You've pampered him so that he's fit for nothing. You're insane. No, I'm not. I'm perfectly sane. I'm willing to stay here and fight you till I've made a man out of Kendall. We both walk out of this house together with our heads up. And I'll see you both dead and rotting first. Oh, good evening, Kendall. Did you take my message to the club? Yes, Father. Uh, Mr. Ainsley said there was no reply. Oh. Hello, Margaret. Hello, darling. Well... Aren't you even going to kiss me? I haven't seen you since this morning. You bet I am. Nonsense, Kendall. Stop acting as if you were a newlywed instead of behaving like a man who's been married a whole year. Well, my mother and father were married 22 years, and he kissed her every night when he came home. There. You see, Father, kissing your wife. Kendall, come along upstairs. I want to talk to you. My dear Margaret, you'd better change. We're dining with some friends of mine. But Kendall and I had planned to eat home tonight, Father. Did you? I didn't... I don't very well see how you can. I left instructions that there was to be no marketing today and gave the servants the night off. Are you coming, Kendall? I, uh, yes, Father. I'll I'll see you later, Margaret. I hate you, Evans Thatcher. 
I hate you. I wish you were dead. Is that you? Margaret, what is it? What's the matter? Larry, I've got to see you. You (laughs) foolish, foolish child. I Oh, I I must have a wrong number. No, you haven't, Margaret. You're in trouble. I'll be right over. No. No, you mustn't. You mustn't. Goodbye. Well, are we all ready? Margaret, you look beautiful in that dress. I'm afraid that the dress will have to go back, Kendall. But, Father, why? You said yourself... I changed my mind. I will not pay for it. I don't want you to pay for it. I didn't ask you to buy it. Oh, Kendall. Kendall, can't you see what he's doing to us? I don't want him to pay for anything of mine ever. Kendall, please. Please, let's get out of this house now. Margaret is hysterical, Kendall. She doesn't know what she's saying. She's just done something very stupid and childish, for which I'm afraid I must punish you, Kendall. No. No, I'm not going to stand by and see this again. You're not Come going here, to... Kendall. I'm sorry, Father, really. I'm sorry. I mean it. I'll never do it's it again. It's a little late for that, my dear. Come here, Kendall. You can have the telephone taken out, I promise. Please don't hit Kendall. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Thatcher? Oh, come in, Mr. Walters. It was thoughtful of you to telephone, let me know you were coming. It enabled me to open the door myself. I don't like to let the servants know that I have detectives calling on me. Oh. You don't like detectives, Mr. Thatcher? Not in my house. As a matter of fact, though, I've been expecting a call from you for a few days now. Ever since Margaret was so foolish as to telephone you the other night. As a matter of fact, Mr. Thatcher, that's just the reason for my visit. Margaret didn't sound at all well to me. Very observant of you, Mr. Walters. Margaret isn't well. She's a neurotic. That's funny. When I knew her, she was a perfectly healthy young lady. Perhaps. But now she's definitely neurotic. Then, of course, you've put her under the care of a physician. I dislike your attitude very much. Are you implying that my son and I aren't treating Margaret properly? Because if you are, you can get out now. Actually, you had no right in this house. I received you because I wanted to show you that there was no reason for Margaret's call to you the other night. Now I shall let you see Margaret. You can hear from her own lips what I've been telling you. Yeah, I'd like to see her. If you'll excuse me, I'll go up and bring her down myself. Thanks. I, uh, won't offer you a drink. However, the radio is over there, if you wish to turn it on. May help you pass the time. music to bring you a special bulletin. Dandy Jim Carey broke out of the death house a little over four hours ago. Holy mackerel. With only two days before his execution, Dandy Jim became the first prisoner ever to escape from the death house. The police have thrown a dragnet all over the country and promise a speedy arrest. Keep tuned to this station for further details. <laughs> Hello, Margaret. Hello, Larry. I, I don't know what was the matter with me. I, I was just upset and nervous. That, that, that's why I called you, Larry. Yeah, that's what Mr. Thatcher told me. Now, look here, Walters. I've stood for a lot from you because you were a friend of Margaret's. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to stand for any more insinuation. It won't do either Margaret or Kendall any good at all. Remember that, Margaret. I'm not insinuating anything, Mr. Thatcher, but I'm not a fool. I know darn well that Margaret called me for some reason, and I don't believe a word of what you're saying. All right. You've succeeded in making me do something that's very painful both to me and Margaret. Please go, Larry. Please. I I don't need your help. I I don't want it. Don't worry, Margaret. I promise you that this won't affect Kendall at all. Now, Mr. Walters, here are the facts. Margaret's made a very good marriage. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Exactly. A girl in Margaret's position has no right to expect to marry my son. You see, Mr. Walters, my son was brought up with everything in the world he wanted. His for the asking. Margaret, on the other hand, had a much different life. 
Much different. You mean that she wasn't spoiled? That and other things. If I did spoil Kendall, Mr. Walters, it's only natural. When a child's mother dies at the birth of a child, and a man has to be both father and mother, his son is apt to be indulged. Or hated. Have you ever heard of Dandy Jim Carey, Mr. Walters? Oh, of course. He's in the death house now, awaiting execution. You didn't know that he was Margaret's brother, did you? Oh. You see what your insinuations have made me do, Mr. Walters. Uh-huh. I see. But it may interest you to know that Dandy Jim escaped from the death house four hours ago. What? Thank heaven. I think that's your phone. I... I'll answer it. I uh, wouldn't dream of it, my dear. I'll go. Margaret. Margaret, why didn't you tell me? I can see you're in a jam. Let me help. I can't, Larry. Just leave me alone. It's, it's best that way. Hello? Believe me. Hello. Hello, answer there. But, Margaret, I only want to help. Believe me. Evidently, oh. wrong number. Yeah. You seem to have a lot of them around this house. And now, Mr. Walters, I think there's nothing more for us to say to each other, so... Good uh, night. If you want me, Margaret. She'll know where to reach you. Good night, Mr. Walters. And now, my dear, we'll wait for the telephone to ring again. Only this time, when Mr. Walters isn't here, you will answer. No. No, I won't. I think you will. Won't you, my dear? I think you will, won't you, my dear? <laughs> it's Kendall. I want Kendall. Kendall won't help you. He never will. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. Certainly. All you have to do is to pick up the telephone and say what I tell you. Well, you wouldn't want to disappoint your brother, would you? He desperately wants to get in touch with you. All right. drama that was touching the lives of the people in the house on East 67th Street came swiftly to its violent conclusion. Evan Thatcher III was determined to dominate and rule his son, Kendall, at all costs. Hating his son from the day he was born, bringing him up a weakling by pampering him, he resented Kendall's marriage to Margaret Carey, a beautiful and strong-willed girl who is determined to break Evan Thatcher's hold over his son. Only Margaret had a brother, Dandy Jim Carey, who had escaped from the death house, and is even now trying to get in touch with her, while she sits on a bench in Central Park waiting anxiously for Kendall. Oh, Margaret, I'm sorry, I'm late. I tried to get away, but Father... I know, darling. Sit down here, right next to me on the bench. Oh, the park's beautiful at night, isn't it, Kendall? Mm. Gee, I look forward so much to sitting here quietly with you. It's the only time in the whole day that I'm happy. Do you think that's right, Kendall, darling? Huh? What do you mean? Well, there's two people so much in love, and marriage should, should let... Be only happy when they can sneak away from the house they live in to sit in the park and hold hands. Oh, Margaret. I know, I know. I'm, I'm no good. Why don't you leave me? Oh, stop saying that, Kendall. Don't you realize that's just what your father wants? I know, I know, but there is just nothing I can do about it. But there is. You're going to have to make a decision, my darling. You're going to have to come away with me. I, I want to. So, so much. But I'm, I'm scared. We'll starve, Margaret. Well, we won't. I tell you, we won't. It's hopeless. Do you think that I could stand watching you work and support me? You wouldn't have to. You could go to work. I, I want to. But you know what happened when we tried it once before. Father saw to it that no one would hire me. And if I did get a job, he had me fired. Well, we made a mistake. We'll have to leave New York. Where will we go? What difference does it make? We'll be together and 
and we'll be happy. But you won't have anything. I, I don't care so much for myself, but I couldn't stand it for you. That's not true, Kendall. Do you mean I'm lying? You mean that I really don't want to go with you? I mean that you're afraid to face the facts. You have no reason to be afraid for me. I wasn't wealthy before I married you, and, and I wasn't unhappy. I am now. I won't be because I love you very much if we go away together. I don't care how little we have as long as we're people living together, supporting ourselves and and away from your father. Margaret, I will. We'll go away. We'll never see my father again. Oh, Kendall. Kendall, darling. Oh, when will we go, Kendall? Tomorrow? No, we... We'll have to make plans. Why? Your mind is made up, isn't it? Of course it is, but we can't just pack up and go like that. Why not? Well, there are... Well, there are things to do. We have to find a place to go, get the tickets. We'll know. go down to the station and get on a train. What difference does it make where we go? But we can't rush. We... Maybe... Oh. Uh... Oh. All right, Kendall. I... I, uh... I have an appointment now. With whom? Your father and my brother. I, uh, I don't suppose you want to come with me. No. No, uh, no, no, I, I, uh, I think it's better if I stay out of this. Yes, Kendall. I guess I have to face it. I, uh, think it's better if I stay out of your life, too. Permanently. Margaret! Yes, Kendall. I love you very much, but... You'll never break away from your father. As he told me, he's done too good a job. Well, you talk as if father were deliberately You don't see to... it. You'll never see it. Goodbye, Kendall. Well, Margaret, wait. Wait. Come in, Margaret, my dear. It's cozy in here. Why did you make me tell Jim to meet us here? It's an ideal place, my dear. Who would ever think of looking for an escaped murderer in the Castle Chess Club? Are you going to help him get away? The question is premature, my dear. This reunion between beautiful sister and doomed brother appeals to my sense of the dramatic. That is why I brought you to the Castle Club tonight. Oh. I hope you realize the honor I've conferred upon you. The first woman ever to set foot in the Castle Chess Club. That was your idea, wasn't it? You're the president of the club, and you made them put that rule into effect. Why, yes, my dear. Now that you mention it, it was. You see, I I don't believe that a chess club is any place for a woman. That isn't the real reason. You hate women. You've hated us all ever since your wife died. And that's why you hate the son you think caused her death. Shout. Silence. Shouting doesn't change anything. I'm right. That's the explanation for you and everything you've done. You're impudent. And... And you should pay for it. I don't care. I... I'll do anything you want if you'll only help Jim get away. Do you realize, Margaret, that you're asking me to break the law? Aiding an escaped criminal? Stop it. I know all about you. How do you think I met Kendall? It was through Jim, of course. I knew that you were the leader in all the crooked business that Jim was doing. I begged him to stop, but he wouldn't. Thank you for being so frank. I often wondered how much you knew about me. And I know that it was your fault Jim killed Mr. Merritt. Hmm. Rather a bold knock for a man who's hiding. Open the door. Your brother will be glad to see you. Kendall! What do you mean by coming in here? I thought that you should know that... Well, I... I followed you. You followed me? For what reason? I specifically told you... I not... noticed Larry Walters following you, too, and I thought... I thought maybe there was some trouble. Well, it was very thoughtful of you, Kendall. Very thoughtful indeed. But as you see, there's nothing wrong. Margaret and I were just having a little, little chat. You can go now. Did you hear me, Kendall? I said you can go. I heard you, Father. Kendall, I want you to stay. You'll regret this, my dear Margaret. Go home, Kendall. If you won't do as I ask... Then I want Kendall to stay. I hope you heard what Margaret just said, Kendall. A deliberate attempt to blackmail your father and to do something unlawful. Well, I don't... I'm, I'm not... It's time I'm... you knew the truth, Kendall. 
We've been married a whole year, and if, if you're ever going to become a worthwhile person, now is the time. Margaret. You can't stop me now. I'm going to tell him. Kendall, you can prepare yourself for some vicious lies. Kendall, you're going to have to be strong enough to face the truth. Your father is a blackmailer. I don't believe it. No, no, Margaret, It's you're... true. After your mother died, when you were born, Evan Thatcher became a bitter, rotten old man. He used his position and his reputation to find out things about people, and and then he blackmailed them. Ridiculous. But Margaret's father didn't need money. He, he liked to hurt people, to see them squirm. He wanted to hurt the world because he'd been hurt. Kendra, she hates me so much. She's trying to poison your mind against me. She hasn't one iota of proof. You covered your tracks well, didn't you? You had my brother Jim do all the dirty work for you. Didn't you ever wonder, Kendall, what business affairs your father and Jim could possibly have had together? Well, it did seem kind of peculiar. Kendall, go home. Let me handle this. I'll explain everything to you in the morning. My word of honor. But, Father... You have my word. Go home. Hello, everybody. Well, this is a nice little family gathering. Jim... Stay where you are, Jim. Stay right where you are. Or this gun might go off. Go on, Kendall. Get out. No. No, I'm staying. I want to hear all of this. Yeah. Tell your son how you double-crossed me with Merritt. Shut up. Why? What have I got to lose? If you don't kill me, the cops will. But why don't you tell your son how you made me pack a gun when I went to Merritt's and how you knew he'd have one, too? So it's true. Margaret wasn't lying. You are an evil old man. One more step, Jimmy, you'll be dead. Jim, wait. Mr. Thatcher will help you to get away. Wait now, sis. But he could have helped me, he folded. And I kept my mouth shut in court for him. Now we'll have the truth. You didn't accuse me because no one would have believed you. I was too careful. What's the difference? First, I'm going to kill you, and then I'm going to die happy. I'll get out of my way, Kendall. Stand back, Kendall. He's not going to hurt me. I'm going to kill him. I won't be blamed for it. He's an escaped convict. I'll tell. I swear I'll tell. I'll tell the police just how it happened. You're not going to be alive to tell anyone anything. Kendall, stand back. You're not going to shoot, Father, or you'll have to shoot me first. Get out of my way. Are you crazy? No, Father. Just seeing you as you really are. I'm growing up, Father. You idiot! These fools can ruin me. I'm going to say that Jim killed Margaret. Then we took the gun away from you. But I had to shoot him in self-defense. All right. Hold it. Everybody reach. Oh, thank heavens you come, Walters. You can arrest this convict. And you, Mr. Thatcher. Now I know why you dislike detectives. Drop that gun. Come along, Jim. Give me that gun, no, Thatcher. I'm going to be all right. Break it up. Not break it up, you two. All right. Take this. <laughs> quicker than you thought. Well, thanks for getting Thatcher for me. I didn't get him for anybody. He took a shot at Margaret. Thanks, anyway. Now, now Margaret will be all right. Won't you, sis? You mean, we'll be all right, Jim. Kendall and me. Yes, that's right, Jim. Don't you worry about Margaret. We'll be really together now. Mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubts and fears. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory in the haunting hour. (laughs) 